Hi everyone. So recently I played the early access version of Diablo 4 and I managed to reach level 80. And I want to talk about some of the unique stuff that I have found. So previously the developers had hinted that uniques would be extremely, extremely rare and most people will almost never see them basically. And I do have to say like straight up, this is actually very untrue. I have to say that I was very surprised about the amount of uniques that I was finding. So I did find a bunch of uniques actually I think almost everything that the rogue class has and also some of those non-class specific uniques such as the razor blade, the frost burn and uh, the penitent greaves. So these are like cross-class items but there are some that are rogue specific. Every class has eight uniques I think when the game launches. Of course that's gonna increase in, in number over time but for now you can see that I actually acquired most of them and with relatively good rolls. You see the item power here is very high on most of these drops 772, 796. I believe that the highest item power in the game is 820. So we're getting pretty close there to the maximum. And it seems like most of these unique drops actually do come as an ancestral when you find them. So at least when you're playing on a tournament difficulty where you can find ancestral loot. And they generally seem to roll very high item power for what they can roll. So I think they have a bit of a boost there when they drop. I believe I have not found a single normal unique. They were always at least sacred or ancestral. So at least this was um, the, my experience here. So I got almost everything that the rogue actually has to offer and some of them multiple times in fact. So I had like a bunch of these Eyes of the Dark. I think I had like three times or four times this pair of pants. I had uh, I think two times the Grass of Shadow. I had like two times the Frostburn. I had the Cow of the Nameless and Mother's Embrace. And well, if you look at this list of uniques that the rogue has, the only one I have not found is a Sky Hunter and the Ashira's Kanjar. So uh, both of them are actually relatively good ones. And I do believe that some uniques are more rare than others. I mean, this is relatively obvious with stuff like the Harlequin Crest that uh, the people like to put into their builds whenever they link me their planners. This one, I have actually not heard of anyone finding it. So this is definitely going to be something really, really rare. But most of these like standard uniques and some of those relatively like specialized and build enabling uniques definitely seem to drop not too infrequently after all. For example, I was talking to Theo who was also playing this early access. He was playing a druid and he also already had this werebear chest, the werebear helm. So there are lots of uniques dropping after all. But I don't think that these are all the screenshots of me finding uniques. And you see here my screenshots. I'm like level 60 here and level 65 there and level 71 here, level 72 here, level 73, level 75. So, you know, another level 75. These items do come in once in a while. So it's obviously not as frequent as legendaries, but yeah, every few hours or so, I would say it seems like you get one. In fact, I actually noticed that uh, completely Nightmare Dungeon seems to relatively often reward you with uniques. So you see here, after finishing a Nightmare Dungeon, you actually get two items, a bunch of XP and gold. And then you can also rank up your glyph. And it seems like a few times at least this has happened to me that I got a unique from the completion bonus. So this might be some kind of like a uh, special way to farm uniques, I guess. Like in the far late game, once you have uh, completed most of the other objectives, you're going to grind those Nightmare Dungeons and then maybe there's a bit of a boost so that people have the option to actually find those uniques that they want to enable a certain build. But yeah, the bottom line of these uniques is that some of them are quite impactful. So for example, I tried the Frostburn here. This freeze effect is very strong on the Rogue. There's a Frigid Finesse passive that synergizes with Cold and Freeze. And yeah, you do give up the core skill ranks, but you do get some other pretty powerful perks for running these. I've already showcased my build with the Word of Hakan, the Reign of Arrows build. So if you want to see that in action, it's actually kind of cool. But in general, most of these uniques are not as impressive, I gotta say. So if they are not like build defining, then most of the time I felt like they were not really worth it that much. It really depends on the item. It really depends on what you're actually trying to do. Like here's a Fawn's chest, for example. I actually did try out this Fawn's chest. I just put it on and I upgraded it. I had like 10,000 Fawns and I was walking around and trash monsters were just one-shotting themselves on me. That was kind of funny. So I think there's a bit of potential for something like that and for some of these items to actually have like a real impact in a build. Or there's just like some kind of supporting choice such as the Penitent Griefs. So again you have like this chill effect. You can get for example the Umbral procs for a resource on your ring. Or you can again enable Frigid Finesse on the Rogue so you get another damage multiplier. So there are some of these adjustments you can make depending on the uniques you find. 
but some of them are also extremely powerful, such as Condemnation. So on the Rogue, this is the combo point weapon, and not only can you deal up to 40% more damage with like a attack, so when you play like a combo point build, such as Pain 20 Shot or Flurry, if you have this weapon, it's just like a straight damage multiplier. But it also has rather decent stats, and it has the chance to give you three combo points at once, which, to be fair, is relatively annoying in this case because there's no like real effect indicator of this proking. You can only like watch your bar to see the combo points, but it's still very powerful even if you don't pay attention to it. But similarly, some of these uniques can also be utter trash. So we have the Wind Force. I've talked about this like two months ago already when they previewed it, and <laughs> well, it it is it is really probably one of the worst uniques in the entire game. This is awful. So <laughs> it has not really great stats it's kind of okay i guess and then it has a lucky hit effect with a very low chance to sometimes get a bit of extra damage yeah and in case you're curious i did try out the grass or shadows so this is probably something that a lot of rogue enjoyers are looking forward to and i gotta say i was not impressed by this one at all i think it's mostly just because of bugs it just doesn't seem to work right so i tried this out and the proc rate seemed all right but the thing is that when a target is already defeated, then the Shadow Club will spawn and just disappear and do nothing. And even if they do something, they don't get your skill upgrades. So for example, I was trying this with Flurry, and my clone didn't have the 360 degree radius attack, and these kind of things. So there seems to be some issues with this here, and it just didn't seem to do anything. I also tried out the Eyes in the Dark, that was actually kind of funny. I couldn't really dig up the clip now, but... Uh, it's it's also a relatively trash item because the stats are relatively bad. Uh, pants are extremely valuable for defensive stats. As you can see here, the one that I have equipped right now, it gives you so much damage reduction, it's actually ridiculous. And these pants give you basically none of that, besides a bit of dodge. And the effect itself is also not really worth it. So you can try to use this to cheese your way around the dungeon or so. If you're doing like maybe a super high tier and you kind of like defeat enemies one by one by just throwing a death trap and then taking a coffee and um, we come back afterwards. But outside of that, it's yeah, kind of oof. But yeah, in general, these uniques are a little bit hit and miss. So some of them kind of fit in your build. They can, can be universally useful, such as this one. 25% lucky hit is relatively good. It has cooldown, it has some energy, it has some decks. So it's not a terrible helm, I'd say. Can definitely fit that into some of those rogue builds. The Frostburn, for example, can be useful. Something like Mother's Embrace that gives you a refund on your resources, on core skills. It has decent stats as well. So there are some of those uniques that you can just kind of like put on or others that you have to completely build around or that actually enable a build. So besides showing off and talking about my experience with some of those uniques, I also just wanted to get across those uniques are not as rare as we thought. So I maybe had, I don't know, something like 15 uniques or so by the time I reached level 80. And that's also it for this video. So you can look forward to a lot of nice drops when the game launches. Obviously not the Shaco. <laughs> I don't think that will drop very soon, but maybe get lucky. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.